friends, my name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and we are doing some amazing Arduino circuits in Tinkercad. So you can definitely join us if you want. This is a circuit we built in a previous video where we have sort of the rainbow going on and off. Um, as we learned how to light up an LED with the Uno and also how to sort of go through a string of LEDs. And today we are going to work on fading an LED. And in one of our previous videos we talked about how this digital rail right here is sort of an off or on, it's like a light switch, it's zero or one typically, and the analog is what you would use to be able to output things other than zero and five. Um, but if we look at our code in the blocky programming, we actually don't have the ability to set our analog pins to any number that we want. But we can set pins three, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven to something other than zero and five. And if we look at that, pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 all have this squiggly line by them. And that's because they have something called PWM. And that stands for Pulse Width Modulation. And basically what it's doing is it's turning a pulse of 0 to 5 on and off. And it modulates how long it turns it on and off. So that you basically get a different average voltage out. And it happens, it cycles so quickly that the LED doesn't know the difference between sort of what it's modulating between, like that pulse width, and some new voltage, like maybe two and a half. So we can see the LED go bright and dim by using these squiggly ones. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually move our wires for all of these to make sure that they are on one that can use that pulse width modulation. So I'm just going to bring these over, and if you click on the wire, it will bring up the dots that you can then click on and move around. And so I'm just gonna move all these down so I'm still in a line, and that will make it easier for me to know what colors I'm at and I don't have to have any wires that are crossing. So now I'm all set up to be able to change it from anywhere between zero and five. And that's gonna be kind of useful for me in the sense that I can now fade my LED in or out. And the zero to five volts is sort of regulated in reality on this pulse width modulation by zero to 255, and that 255 to zero depends on what that modulation is. That's what I can modulate it at. And so let's look at our code, and let's just throw away what we have. So we have this nice sort of going on and off piece. And I am going to change what pin three looks like. I'm gonna fade it in and out. So I'm going to do that by counting up. And I'm going to set my pin 3 to 0. I'm going to count up maybe by 5s. And I will count up from 0 to 255. So that's off to 5 volts all the way on. And I want to set pin 3 to whatever this variable j is. Just like that. Now. It's gonna go through this really, really quickly. So I'm probably gonna see it turn on really, really quickly. And if I wanna slow that down somewhat, I can add a little bit of a weight in there, maybe a quarter of a second. And then we can turn this on. And once the simulate station starts, you notice that it doesn't just flick on, it sort of fades on. It sort of comes in nice and slow. If I want it to go back out, I can count down from 255 to zero, also by five, and I can do the same thing. I can set pin J to that, and then we can go on, and it'll slowly, it should slowly go off for us. Although sometimes when we run into problems, what we can do is we can look at what is happening in our project. So what I can do is I can actually print that letter J and make sure, hey, is this doing what I think it's doing? And so what I'll do, that's called printing it to the serial monitor. And that serial monitor is right down here. So now in theory, I should see J sort of counting up and down and we can see then what it's doing. So there's our J, it's counting up. And once it gets to 255, so it might actually have seemed like it was just all on and wasn't going back off. But in reality, we're just going really slow. We're still counting up here. Now we're counting back down. So what I could do is I could either increase J by more weight 
even less. Maybe I wait for 25 milliseconds instead. So let's see how that goes. We're gonna see these numbers, see how they are going much, much quicker. And we can look at what does that look like. And now we see our LED fading on and fading off, which is gorgeous. And then we can apply it. We can add more loops to fade these other ones on and off. So before we add some more of these for each LED, I think I'm just gonna make this go a little bit faster. So it'll go all the way off and then this one will go through and my plan is red goes up and down, then orange and then yellow and then green, but you can choose how you want it. Maybe you want red to turn on and then orange to fade on and yellow and they sort of feed on in a row, which that sounds kind of cool actually, let's do that. So what we would do for that, you can break apart your count up and count down blocks and we will copy or duplicate that count up block. And this will happen in turn. So first we'll count up on step three, then we'll count up on pin five, and we can even take a look at what that will look like. There's up three, and so now it'll sort of fade on. And let's continue to duplicate this and update the pin that we want. And because we just went sort of um, up in pin numbers that had that pulse width modulation, I can just go to the very next pin available without even checking my circuit board because I know that the way that it's wired up is like that. All right, so we'll count up to 10. So now we should go all the way up to 10 and then the red will fade off. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the simulation, which is nice. And then this one is gonna go off. And so now it comes back on because it goes back through that loop. But now I want to do the same type of thing for counting down. We'll duplicate this. So we'll per, um, turn pin three off which is red, and then we'll turn orange off, which is pin five. Then we'll turn yellow off, which is pin six. Then we'll turn green off, which is pin nine. And lastly, we'll turn blue off, which is pin 10. And then it'll start all the way over from the top of that loop. So we're going on, and then we fade off, and then we'll start to fade back on. Now, if you wanted to go on and then off from blue, we could totally do that by just changing which pins we're at. So we'd find our first countdown, which is right here. And instead of pin three, I would go to pin 10, let's say, and then I would count down from pin 10. So 10, nine, six will stay the same, five, and three three and that will change the way that these go on and off and we can see that change in the code now I'm going off this direction so you can choose how you want them to fade on and off and that's sort of a fun thing that you can do using these loops where you're counting by some number and if you like you know we have INJ you can always rename that to sort of your brightness level if you'd like which is sometimes really nice but that's a, another fun way to do it with the Arduino Uno instead of using a capacitor. So that is our project for today. Thank you so much for checking out our fading LED light with Arduino. It's a lot of fun and we hope to see you in our next project. Have a great one. Bye friends.